Hey guys, my name is Mitchell. I'm an EMT and I'm starting med school this July. Um, I've seen a lot of posts on like Student Doctor Network and Reddit and some Facebook groups with students wondering, you know, should I do my EMT course? Um, you know, if I'm pre-med, will that help me get into medical school? Is it a good experience? So I did my EMT course in July of 2014. Um, I've worked as an EMT for a little over three years total. Um, and like I said, I'm starting medical school this July and I definitely feel like it's helped me. Um, little preface, so I took EMT over the summer. Uh, I, I go to school, at, I went to school at a university and I decided to take my EMT course over the summer at a state college nearby, like almost like a community college. And it was really ideal for me because I was interested in medicine and you know, I, I kind of like some aspects of physical therapy, sports medicine, uh, you know, emergency medicine sounded cool, but I had zero experience in any of those fields. I just was interested in it. So I paid like $1,200 cash and I took a 14 week EMT course over the summer. Fit right, uh, you know, right nicely between my spring and fall semester of university. So I did it and in doing so, you know, obviously I learned the basics of emergency medicine at the level of an EMT basic. Um, and at least in Florida, EMTB is the level of, a, you know, of our EMT and then you can do EMTP or paramedic school. We become a paramedic. We don't really have EMTAs here, which is kind of like a mid-level between the two. Um, so I did my EMTB and I learned, you know, obviously BLS and just learning how to manage uh, a basic patient, how to do an assessment, how to, how to treat somebody, uh, how to mostly how to do a good assessment and basic emergency management skills, learning how to do the ABCs of medicine, um, learning how to do CPR and, and rescue breathing and all the different things you learn, bleeding control as an EMT, and also how to assist paramedics and um, higher up staff like nurses and, and doctors. So doing my clinical rotations, I got to do some, uh, I did one fire rotation. I didn't, I don't really like, uh, I knew I didn't want to be on the fire truck. Um, I liked being on the ambulance and I, I really enjoyed the medical calls, but a couple, we were just sitting at fire calls and I just, I didn't really enjoy the pre-hospital setting. Um, after I got my EMT, um, I taught anatomy for a little bit, but then I got a job at an inner facility transport, like private ambulance company. Um, it wasn't the best job, it paid very low. It taught me a lot about pre-hospital medicine, uh, just because we were doing a lot of nursing home to ER transports that, you know, 911 would do the same type of transports. They were mostly non-emergent um, ER calls. So like we would go to a nursing home for a person that might have fallen and hit their head um, or they had low blood sugar or, uh, you know, sometimes it was more emergent stuff like chest pain, shortness of breath, some altered mental status if I was with a paramedic, but they were typically non-emergent calls. And, I did have emergent calls every now and then where we'd be going lights and sirens and the patient was pretty gravely ill, but they were few and far between. Most of it was, you know, <laughs> grandma fell down and needs to go to the ER, so let's call the private ambulance company. And uh, we also did a lot of ER to ER transfers. Those were usually pretty cool. Um, you know, we did a lot of transfers from like tertiary centers, kind of like smaller standalone ERs or smaller hospitals. Um, the patient might have been having a stroke or a cardiac event or, or something where they needed to be transported over to a bigger hospital with more resources. So we did a lot of that. Um, that was cool. But the main things I learned there were how to interact with nursing staff, how to interact with physicians, and how to interact with patients. The most important thing. Um, I got really good at my assessment skills. I got really good at my bedside manner. I was able to just talk to tons of patients and, and staff and just really become um, a, kind of a well-rounded beginner EMT. I, I learned how to not suck in giving report. I, I learned a, a lot of little like little things like medication names, um, conditions. I got to read through people's medical records all the time. So you start learning what medications treat what diseases. Um, just becoming familiar with the whole world. It's very entry level, but it does help you. It kind of lays a foundation for everything else. So after working there for a while, I think about nine months is how long I worked there. I got a job at um, a, a large hospital in Florida where I've worked for over two years now. And I'll be leaving there soon to go to medical school. Um, working in the ER as an ER tech uh, has been incredible. Because I, like I said, I wasn't really drawn to pre-hospital medicine. I, I love emergency medicine, but I'd much rather be in the hospital environment. So our ER techs, it's, uh, I'm sure it's pretty similar in most emergency departments in the United States at least. They could either be EMT basics like I am, they could be paramedics, um, 
and, or they could be some something in between or something a little bit uh, lower than an EMT with like less training I guess like a CNA typically is like a six week course uh, some some of our techs are CNAs and a lot of them are nursing students they let them work as techs so um, each of us have varying levels of responsibility EMTs we get to do a lot of the place I work um, we get to do straight stick like butterfly needles lobotomy um, we get to help out the nurses and doctors with tons of different procedures you're kind of just like a helping hand which is the, the coolest thing to me because while you're not doing procedures, you're right next to the doctor, you're right next to the nurse, helping with central lines, with intubations, putting people on BiPAP, uh, helping get IVs, um, you know, critical patients, or we get them all the time. So you learn a ton about managing respiratory failure, uh, cardiac arrest, uh, just septic patients, just really, really sick people, and you're right there in the action. Um, if, if they're, you know, as an ER tech, if somebody's in cardiac arrest, you're not just wondering what do you do, you're doing CPR, you're listening to what medications are being given, uh, you're putting them on the monitor, you're able to see the rhythm that they're in, you're able to shock them. So it's really a hands-on experience. And um, so that's the best thing about it is that it's a hands-on experience where you're truly involved in the care of somebody in the hospital. Um, the second coolest thing about it is that, th this is probably gonna vary depending on which hospital you work at and the environment you're in, but like nine out of ten docs that I work with are all really cool and um, you know most of the scribes and the techs that I work with are all trying to go to PA school, nursing school, medical school so the doctors know that and most of them are really um, helpful and they want you to learn so they'll pull you aside and teach you stuff and they'll ask you if you understand what's going on sometimes uh, and, and they'll kind of just fill you in and if you ask them questions they're usually more than happy to help um, so it's really cool having physicians um, at the ready to answer questions and teach you stuff um, and not only physicians you also you're working with experienced nurses and uh, experienced nurses are incredible I mean they're gonna teach you so many little things about how patients act and how you can handle tons of little problems that arise um, don't undervalue the, the experience of a, of a veteran nurse or, or even a, um, a nurse that's been around a few years nurses are awesome and as a tech you're basically a nurse's assistant so you know they're super important and it's so funny like some of my friends that are nurses they're like when you go to medical school and you become a doctor you better be a good one you better you better treat your nurses right because we'll get you if you don't and they're right there there's there are some doctors that I work with uh, that are just mean they're just hard to work with they're, they're rude to the nursing staff they're, they're hard to communicate with like if you have an issue that comes up you don't really feel comfortable addressing it to them just because you know it's gonna be a big issue and they can't they can't communicate properly and you don't want to be that guy. So yes, I would absolutely recommend being an EMT if you want to uh, get some clinical experience. There's not a whole lot of ways to get hands-on clinical experience as a pre-med student. You can be a scribe, that's probably the most popular option because you just need some like basic pre-medical coursework, like medical terminology, I think, to become a scribe. Um, and as long as you're trained in it, you, you can start. And you're basically the doctor's right hand man. You're charting all of the stuff for them. You're hearing all their assessments and all their findings. So, you know, the, the scribes I work with, I'm good friends with a few of them. They know a ton about charting and the thought processes of the doc that I don't know yet because I don't have as much time right next to them. I'm doing a lot of you know, patient care and, and sometimes we have to like clean the patients and stuff. So I'm not always right next to the doc listening to their every thought process and charting whatever they think. Um, so scribing is a great option. Uh, if you want to be an EMT, just understand that there's different things you can do with that. There's really only two or three. You can do pre-hospital 911. Um, depends on your state and county. It's, it varies by county a lot. Maybe even by city, actually. Um, a lot of places, their fire and their EMS are separate. And in a lot of places, like where I live, they're integrated. So like I couldn't go work for the 911 service because it's fire rescue. I have to be a firefighter as well. Whereas if I was to go a county away, they have an EMS service that is separate from fire. So I could go work for them as an EMT on 911 service. So um, as an EMT, you can work for a 911 service if they don't require you to be a firefighter or you can get your firefighter certification too. But it's just kind of a lot of work if you're in goal as pre-med. So 911 service if it's EMS only. You can do interfacility transport, which is very popular. I know a lot of guys I worked with 
that then a facility company I worked for went straight to PA school. I think one of them went to medical school straight out of there, and that's the only experience they had in, as an EMT. So that's fine too. It, you're still getting clinical hours. You're still touching patients. And then, <clears throat> so you have 911, interfacility transport, and then working in the ER. Um, you know, the only other things I can think of would be like working for a theme park. Sometimes you can land a job as a 911, or not a 911, but an EMT at a theme park. Uh, there was even like a, <laughs> there was like a Crayola crayon experience, like not a theme park, but like some sort of big store. And they were hiring EMTs, like a couple EMTs. I guess they had a little medical staff. Um, so there's little avenues like that, but those are the three main ones, at a facility now in one and, and working on ER. If your goal is to be a doctor or a PA, um, you need to work in an ER if you want the best experience, in my opinion. The, pre, the pre-hospital stuff is awesome, and it, it will benefit you 100%, but I think the if, you're, if you want to be a doctor and you want to learn as much as you can about the hospital environment, work in the ER. You, you know, you'll get to work side by side with them and just really learn how the hospital works, at least on the ED side of things. So that's all I really have. If you have any questions at all, like feel free to shoot them to me um you know i learned a ton from people that were kind of where like i am like where i'm right before medical school i was talking to people that were right before medical school when i started and now they're like a couple years ahead of me in med school and now i'm asking them for advice and i'm giving advice to the mt students i precept so you know it's always great to have like mentors or people to ask for advice from that are just a little bit ahead of you or a little bit further ahead of you Um, because then you can do the same for others down the road. So shoot me as many questions as you want. I hope this was helpful for those of you that are wondering if you should do EMT school, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot.